On today's tutorial talks, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects in suiting, and that is the shoulder construction. And we're also going to be posing the question, what do you think that your specific intercontinental style is in terms of the shoulder? To begin, let's talk about the very basics. When you think of a shoulder, what is it that comes to mind when you think of two types of shoulders? Most people will say a padded shoulder or an unpadded shoulder, and that's very layman's terms. But once you get into the sartorial world, you'll begin using different terms. For padded, you'll start saying structured shoulder. And for the unpadded shoulder, you'll start saying unconstructed or deconstructed shoulder. And so these are the terms we're going to work with to start with the constructed shoulder and the unconstructed shoulder. So how would you describe a constructed shoulder in Italian? Maybe you don't know Italian, but maybe you've heard the term. The term in Italian for structured shoulder is conrellino, and that simply means with a roll. Um, and another way, another way to say it is to say the roped shoulder, um, which is also a rolled shoulder. Um, if you look at the opposite shoulder construction, uh, no padding, unstructured, a way you may say it in Italian is either su camicia, which is like for a shirt, or you are like a shirt, or you may say spalla camicia, which me simply means shirt shoulder. And in your mind, you probably can get that picture of the shirt shoulder and imagine how a deconstructed suit coat or jacket would look very close to a shirt. So you've learned the two terms, conrellino and spalacamicia, and that simply means structured versus unstructured. Now what about your intercontinental style? Would you say, if you began with the stronger shoulder, structured shoulder, would you say that you like the English style, for example? Um, the English style, in my view, and we're going to show you a few photos of the English suit, is very um, clean, structured. Um, it almost looks as if the arm section of the suit is coming over the suit itself. Um, it's a very distinct look, and as you look at more and more English suits, you will automatically, within seconds time, be able to spot uh, a British or English style suit. So look those over and see if that's something that appeals to you. Next, you may prefer a French style. And now we're staying within that structured element. The French style is also um, padded, um, with a very interesting point um, in terms of stylistic approach. There's something called the pagoda line, which runs from the neck to the shoulder, and it literally follows the natural line of the body. So you'll see a pagoda swoop right here, and then you'll see a very interesting structure on the shoulder itself. And what happens with this, and this is something that the Chiffinelli House does in Paris, is there's a special way to make that shoulder look padded. It's not with the traditional padding, like you see with just the foam and the pieces of cloth or canvas, as they call it, stacked. Instead, this is a method of using the fabric itself and wadding the fabric and some canvas together to very artistically create a shoulder that actually raises a little bit and forms what could be a crescent, called a crescent in this area. And we'll put up a few pictures so you can look at the front shoulder and it is referred to as la cigarette. So have a look at these examples of the front shoulder and see if that's something that appeals to you. Now, we've talked about constructed shoulders. Let's skip all the way down to the other side of the spectrum and talk about the unconstructed shoulder. Remember, we're talking about shirt shoulders or spalacamicia, or if you want to say, like the, uh, like the shirt, Sukamichia. You choose the term, but you should memorize one or the other. Okay, if you look at these examples of Italian jackets, you'll notice that indeed the jackets really do kind of look like they were put together as shirts. Now, when you put a shirt together, you take this part of the fabric and you scoop it under the top of the fabric here and sew it like this. So it does actually reflect how a shirt is sewn. A lot of people call these Italian spalacamicia, sucamicia shoulders, sloppy shoulders. And that's basically because there is almost no construction 
in this jacket, and I am wearing a jacket from Napoli by Sartoria del Cori, and I can only feel a little thin piece of canvas, uh, one piece of fabric right here, and no padding at all in my shoulders. And so you would call this a sloppy shoulder, but it's not necessarily sloppy, it's just absent of padding. If that's a look you, you like, we'll show you some examples of different jackets that have been crafted in Italy that are indeed Spallacomitia. And you can take a look at these and see if this is something that appeals to you. Finally, which area have we left out? Maybe America comes to mind. So the American shoulder, how do we describe that? A lot of people will say that falls within the trad look or the Ivy League look. Both of these would be pretty correct. Um, if you remember, American style started out with the sack suit. And one reason that that sack suit, which is sort of an in-between, when you talk about shoulders, in-between a strong construction and a weak construction, somewhere in the middle, um, one reason that we went to the sack suit is because of the Industrial Revolution. We were mass marketing jackets and we couldn't do anything really special with the padding. And when I say we, I'm American. So we couldn't do anything special with the padding because it was being mass marketed. And in terms of a shirt shoulder, that also takes some technical savvy and know-how. So we couldn't do a shirt shoulder and you know, a lot of hand sewing at times. And so this is why we have this thing that's in the middle, not extremely constructed, not really the sloppy shoulder, but somewhere in the middle with normal padding, which are layers of foam and canvas, sometimes stacked on each other, very thinly put together here to create the American shoulder. And we're gonna put up a few examples of the American jacket and you can see if this is a style that appeals to you. Interestingly, this is a style that's coming back. Uh, the Japanese seem to take a lot of interest in that uh, sack suit look and that old um, golden age Hollywood look. And so maybe this is something that you like and that you can either buy off the rack or commission for your next jacket. Another point I'd like to make about the Italian construction is that when the armhole is cut um, on the jacket, it's actually often cut a little bit smaller than when this area, the sleeve, is cut. So you, this, you have a smaller armhole right here on the jacket, and then a larger armhole in the sleeve. What does this create? Excess fabric. And so, especially in Napoli, when this method of cutting is done with the deconstructed Spallacomitia shoulder, is this extra fabric creates gathers. And what these gathers are called is a term referred to as shearing. So this is almost an artistic form with some of the crafters. Another consideration is the climate in Italy. Now the Northern Italians will add a little structure to the jacket itself. And this is something that a lot of people don't understand. They think if you have an Italian jacket, it's gotta be deconstructed. This is just not true. As you go further north in Italy and the, co the weather is cooler, the jackets will do more of a Roman method, which means they're going to put some more padding in that um, jacket and it will actually keep you warmer as that is sort of an insulation, um, if you, especially if you're not wearing an overcoat. And as you move south in Italy, you're going to see those pads come out and more of a deconstructed look. Another thing you wanna consider before you choose the shoulder for you is what your body shape is. Is it an apple? Is it a pear? Is it rectangular? Is it a V? Um, if it's more large at the bottom part of your body, then you wanna go ahead and get a structured shoulder to balance out the silhouette. Have a stronger shoulder to balance out the rest of your body. If though, your body is a V shape, you can go with a really soft shoulder, deconstructed shoulder, because you already have a lot of bulk up here. If your body happens to be a rectangle, say like a model's body, then you are free to choose any type of shoulder you want, whether it's uh, Conrolino or Spallacomitia, it's really up to your own style preference. So in brief, one of the most important aesthetic considerations you can make is making sure your shoulder is crafted well. Um, one of the first things I look at when I see a suit 
is the shoulder. And I've seen so many examples, both on social media and just being in the industry. And my eye immediately goes to the shoulder almost every time when I see a suit. If you recall in a past tutorial talk, we talked about how great the tailors were to be very subtle when they're examining a suit. And they will glance down at the buttonhole and the lapel. But I'm a little more obvious. I go directly for the shoulder. So I hope that um, you will realize the importance of giving the shoulder you choose real consideration before you buy a suit. I hope this discussion was relevant to you today, and I hope that you can review the different intercontinental styles and be able to speak about the shoulder in terms of being constructed and deconstructed. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments, and we'll try to do our best to make sure each question is answered.